Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here. It's time for a review. Yeah, an Immortal Orchestra 2. Unknown Mortal Orchestra is a lo-fi psychedelic pop and rock outfit whose debut LP was reviewed here a few years ago. Eh, I was pretty on the fence with it. I wasn't as hot on it as other people for a number of reasons. There were a lot of tracks on there that felt just shockingly short, kind of underdeveloped, the very sort of flat lo-fi production that didn't have a lot of detail or character to it really kind of got old by the end of the album, which overall was pretty short of breath, just like the songs on it. However, there were things to this band's style and their sound that I liked a lot, like their very kind of beefy, funky, and sometimes hip-hop influenced, I thought, drum beats, as well as some pretty flashy guitar playing, too. Those two things came together really well on the track Funny Friends, and the band had a great single with the track How Can You Love Me, too. So there definitely was this glimmer of light and, and talent that had me crossing my fingers that I would enjoy this new LP more. And I'm actually happy to say that I do feel that this LP for Unknown Mortal Orchestra shows improvement. Their ambition shows on this album. It's a longer record, longer tracks. They stick mostly to their to their still, their lo-fi sound, but bring a more diverse palette of psychedelic flavors and sounds. I guess the most obvious downside on some of these tracks, though, is that the mix and the recording can be off. Maybe the lo-fi thing isn't, isn't their best friend sometimes, because there are some tracks tracks here where the drums feel almost non-existent with how much they're turned down, maybe they were recorded in sort of a strange way, maybe just with one microphone. I mean, really that's how it feels like with how below they are the guitars and the bass, which really kind of makes me miss how beefed up they were on some tracks from the debut. They sometimes brought a very funky character to their debut LP that I liked a lot. Unknown Mortal Orchestra still manages to bring more for the listener on this LP though, more sound, more melody, more personality. It's a bit of a change in character that might not appeal to hardcore fans of the debut LP because while that album does have psychedelic characteristics, there's also kind of a cute quaintness to it, sort of a, a bubblegum flavor. On a lot of spots with number two, instead things are not feeling as sugary, they're not feeling as bubblegum, they're feeling kind of mature, sort of soulful. Especially in the vocals, mainly on tracks like the seven minute song Monkey, which is really kind of slow moving, chilled out. It might be my favorite song on here, I mean it really feels like this vintage blend of psychedelic rock and funk. Sort of strange but undeniable with its grooves. And sort of a, a new thing for me on here as well is there's a very prevalent Beatles influence on a few moments here, especially the opening track on this album, which I didn't feel was as strong on the debut, not so strong that it would sort of bang me over the head as being Beatles, Beatles, Beatles. The cadence and just the resonance of the vocal harmonies and just the quality of the vocal recording with the microphones that are being used and the way that the vocals are equalized. I mean, all of these things just say Beatles to me on this opening track, and these vocals are clashed with some beautiful, just almost breathtaking guitar work. The track has a great start, it has a great middle, but then it starts to sort of flounder at the end, kind of fading out for quite a long time, and I guess sort of meandering in the process. Again, the band kind of presents material that feels kind of unfinished, or just material that feels like the end wasn't really thought of or cared about. I kind of feel the same way about the track So Good at Being in Trouble, which again has a great start, but sort of ends up meandering around the middle because there aren't a lot of peaks or anything in the song, it's very chilled out, and then it just sort of nonchalantly ends. But despite some abruptness, I'm still finding some beauty in these tracks. The song Swim and Sleep Like a Shark has this kind of spectral vocal to it that has this sort of a throaty whisper quality to it that's kind of haunting. And the guitar chords and the arpeggios on this track are just played 
played and executed in this really whimsical way. I mean, just flawless. The way that they're sort of dancing so nimbly across this very TikTok drumby is wonderful. The song One at a Time is another short track that's really well executed. Fun, squawking guitar chords, shots of horns, really bright, really flamboyant. The most bombastic song in the entire LP, I think. But again, the song kind of ends abruptly. I guess I just can't understand why they take tracks like this and make them so short and yet drag out songs like The Opposite of Afternoon, which, I mean, it's got some nice playing in it, but the way the band is performing the song, it feels like they're trying not to wake the neighbors or something. Songs like this really kind of make me feel like the band brought back that sort of refreshing first-timer attitude that they had on their debut. You know, I feel like this LP overall is, is interesting. I can put it on and be engaged throughout the entire thing. There's some very impressive playing. Occasionally it's beautiful, but rarely is it exciting, I guess. One of the few moments where I feel like that happens is the song Faded in the Morning. It just has this mean psychedelic rock groove to it, and when the vocals pop in, they are sung in falsetto, and it's really fiery passionate falsetto. And I love the way the guitar sort of just follows what the vocal is doing melodically, so technically in the background. It's just this extra layer of just impressive playing that the band always brings to a track. Most of the songs on here are, are really, really good, but put them together into this one full-length album and I kind of feel like I'm taking this ride where there's just not a lot of scenery, just a whole lot of fields. Because there aren't a lot of emotional highs or lows and the ones that are there are kind of short. Still, I ended up liking this album a lot. I found it to be way more impressive than their debut. I'm feeling a light to decent seven on this LP. If you've given it a listen, what did you think of it? Did you love it? Hate it? why, and what do you think I should review next? Anthony Fantano, Unknown Mortal Orchestra, forever.